My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. And well met, I am Mr. Disembodied Voice DM <laughs> at your service, and I welcome you one and all to Lawful Stupid RPG. We are trapped at home, and tonight we are continuing with session four of Baldur's Gate, Descent into Avernus. Playing with us today, we have Typhon the Wizard, Silas the Paladin, Doran the Warlock, Falkrun the Cleric, Rim the Ranger, and Persephone the Bard, who is indisposed this evening and will be played by yours truly. We also have a seventh player joining tonight, and we will introduce him when he makes his entrance. I know I speak for everyone when I say how excited we are to get streaming, and also a bit nervous. All of us are new to this format. Mistakes will be made, mostly by me. Please keep your criticisms kind, have patience, and know that all negative comments will be carefully and judiciously ignored. Are there any comments or announcements before we begin? Yes, uh, absolutely. I would love to go ahead and do a shameless plug for a moment. Both Persephone and myself, uh, who is Tess and myself, uh, are part of the Ohio Shakespeare Festival. So for those of you who are on the interwebs and are looking to check out something to do, we did a live Zoom version of Romeo and Juliet. So if you are a teacher and looking for some teaching uh, material for your classes, or if you're just a Shakespeare nerd like me uh go ahead and check that out it's at our webpage uh, ohioshakespearefestival.com or on our facebook page ohio shakespeare festival thank you very much anyone else have anything they'd like to say before we begin all right excellent one final word before we get started there is a lot of ground to cover tonight and while i usually like to let everything play out as it may Tonight, I will be assuming control of the narrative several times in order to move things along. I will try to make listening to me dictate your actions as interesting as possible. With that, let us begin. My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true, and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Last time, acting on the authority of the Flaming Fist, you continued your infiltration of the Dungeon of the Dead Three. Dispatched many of the murderous cultists down here, including an Iron Consul of Bane and a Death's Head of Baal. In doing so, you rescued, rescued one Mortlock Van Tampur. He has revealed to you that these cultists are being funded by his family, led by Duke Thalamra Van Tampur, one of the rulers of Baldur's Gate. For some reason, Mortlock's family has betrayed him, and he was to be murdered down here. You have effectively disrupted those plans, and Mortlock has offered to tell you all that he knows about his mother's plan for Baldur's Gate. Also with you is Vendetta Cress, a rescued tiefling torture victim. You are gathered in a fairly secluded spot as you rest before deciding your next move. Adventurers, what would you like to do? All right, so the last we stopped, everybody was taking a short rest aside from uh, myself and Silas. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. You and Silas are standing guard next to the secret door. All right. 
Well then, I do believe we have one more objective that needs uh, solving down here. Is that correct? Indeed. There is one more head yet to sever from these cultists. I do like the way you think. Um, Mortlock, could you remind us again who this last leader of the cult is? Uh, sure. Uh, her name is Flemnis, I think. I've got to be honest, I've kind of kept clear of her. She's, uh, she's creepy. She's uh, the one responsible for all the undead you see down here. That is A necromancer. Uh, I suppose, uh, as I said, don't really know much about that sort of thing. Um, I've seen her once or twice, but uh, I'm still clear. Well, then if she's raising the dead, she must certainly be put to rest, along with those poor souls she's torturing. <laughs> you all really uh, have quite a lot of enthusiasm for this. Are you, are you sure you know what you're doing? going up against my mother. Taking a risk, that's for sure. I have well. faith. <laughs> well, well, all the people me, down I here had faith. You see where it got them. Personally, I, I just don't like the thought of whatever she did to the Grand Duke. I have a personal connection with him. Um, and Persephone chimes up at that and says, as do I, uh, related distantly. Must be nice to have such fine friends. Well, he uh, shows me no favors, but he also doesn't get in my way. Undoubtedly. That's why you're here in a sewer. Speaking of, I would like to get out of here as quickly as possible. Second that. Have we made ourselves ready to dispose of this last person, this last Flennis? More than ready. Well, I believe, Mortlock, you need to uphold Journey of the Bargain. Lead the way. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Does anybody else wish to speak? I want to ask Mortlock one quick question. Uh, sure. I'm, I, uh, I go into the room and I show him the crown. Mm. What do you know of this? Uh, well, I think I mentioned that my mother has been funding these cultists. This is part of the payment. Uh, all of that treasure that you found with this part of the payment um, I'm not sure where she got it it's uh, I mean, it's not like anything I've ever seen back at the house but she's she's got a lot a lot of uh, a lot of irons and a lot of fires um, so are you guys going after her I mean, you're essentially doing that now, but are you going to continue? The mission well, we seems... were given were to clear these sewers of any cultist activity. If that means going against your mother, then, well... It seems perhaps we've kicked the hornet's nest and the, all that's left is to burn the rest and squash the queen, as it were. <laughs> well, Not an easy were... task, but... Not at all. Um, if you want some advice on that, I might be able to help. Is uh, uh, I mean, my life is obviously not worth anything as long as I stay in Baldur's Gate. So I, w I would say a direct assault on the Van Dampur Manor is suicide. But maybe you all know better than I do. I'd happily you, do it if I thought it would work, but... You point out sure. the obvious and then don't give us anything helpful. Well, I wanted to know if you wanted the help, but fine. My brother, Amric. 
he's the source of uh, my mother's, not the source, he's the beneficiary of my mother's affection. If you get your hands on him, I'll be a very powerful bargaining tool. If you're interested in that sort of thing. And where is It's a he? good plan. Well, he usually hangs out at the Low Lantern Tavern, but my mother's got something going on, something big. And lately, he's been by her side, but I would expect that three days from now, at the latest, you could find him there. The Low Lantern. So, that's right. So, to be clear, you're suggesting that we kidnap your brother? Well, if you kill him, my mother will come after you with everything she's got. What a but, strange family you have. <laughs> well, they tried to kill me first, right? Fair is fair. Is Amrick the type that can be reasoned with? Yeah, he's a little shit. So, yes. Mm. Uh, I suppose. Well, regardless, we don't need to discuss it here. Should we finish our work? Before we do, yes. perhaps you could let us know, how would we recognize Amrick? Well, he's at the Low Lantern, like I said. Um smaller than me he's got a goatee i mean <laughs> he sets himself up there like a lord everyone knows his name mm, pretty hard to miss i think fair enough let's go kill something <laughs> that's <laughs> more like it said our paladin. <laughs> I don't see the cleric objecting either. Perhaps the world needs a little bit of more suffering where these are concerned. I like how we get the moral lesson from the backstabber. That was nice. That was good. I said nothing about suffering, Typhon. <laughs> I said kill. I'll leave the suffering to you. Again, I'm not quite sure you know it, what it is I do, but... Um... Do you not minister to the suffering? I do not minister. Well, perhaps. I end suffering how I can. End suffering. And yet here you are, still insufferable. Hmm. Well played, dwarf. Yeah. Shall we continue? Let's do what we came to do. All right. We go. Indeed. With Mortlock to guide, easily able to find your way through the dungeon, he points out several hazards, and you quickly realize that without his help, exploring the rest of these catacombs would have been quite dangerous. You pass by two more altars, one to Baal and one to Merkel, both of which you carefully destroy. You are also able to escort Vendetta to the exit, and she tearfully thanks you before heading out into the afternoon streets. I desperately hope that's not the last we see of her. So if you would give me a moment, I'm going to move you all. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of a interesting sensation, I'm sure. You it's always move me. I just want to make sure I don't get this dead cultist up there too. He won't be of any use. <laughs> um Am I right in assuming, Typhon, that you re-summon the familiar? Uh, yes. Good. I marked off the gold. Um... Hawk, the owl. So that was before I yes. knew about the rest, so I will go ahead and reduce my hit points accordingly. Okay. Yeah, everybody needs to be at the hit points that they were before leveling up, and unless, of course, you used um, your hit dice during the short rest to level yourself up. Give you more hit points, I should say. All right, so here we go. A mass teleport 
<laughs> I don't know where you guys are going to end up. This will be interesting. Uh, yeah. Awesome Some bad. of you didn't quite make it onto the board, but we'll see about that. In a world. <laughs> there we go. Imagine this is just like the time lapse of us going through the dungeon. like Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm going to be keeping uh, Persephone towards the back because I promised Tess I would not kill her. <laughs> so glad to have you back. By the way, roll new character. Yeah. It's right. <laughs> well, I like Persephone. You know, it's I'm not like it's not well. like kicking someone off a cliff and hoping that a giant eagle just happens to catch them. No, no not like that at all. Um, so, eventually, Mordlock stops. Out here. I think Flores likes to work somewhere in this area. Very well. Any defenses that she sets up, or is she oh, like I said, safe? I... <laughs> well, I don't know. If I had to guess, I'd say that there's probably people around here who know you're here whether or not they've told her was anyone's guess depends on how busy she's been for the last well, few hours hmm. oh well then let's find her let's go ahead and move up those stairwell there and then uh sean is that door open or closed it is closed all right Shall we try the barbarian lockpick? I don't know. I'm I'm wary of doorknobs in this place, Typhon. I'll look at it. That's fine. I would like to check it, um, see for locks and traps. All right, make an investigation check. Ten as a result. It is not locked, as far as you can tell and also not trapped. All right, I open it. The door opens. You know... And that is what you <gasps> see. Uh-huh. And uh -huh. as soon as you open the door, you see a little rat who squeaks and tries to run past you, Falkron. And, Falkron, as you walk to there, you are able to see this um so one moment please can i make an opportunity attack on the rat you can <laughs> but let's do this in order all right fair enough fair enough uh let's see okay so the rat sees you and immediately squeaks and runs past you make your op attack all right <laughs> the rat instantly dies he looked familiar. Nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Very funny. So, but as you move to there, without being silent or anything at all, oh, wow. you are able to see in this room, there is a woman uh, wearing uh, a, a gray cloak and looking very sepulchral. Uh, let's see. Um, the room is partially collapsed. It has three wooden beams bracing the ceiling. This um, woman is frighteningly thin with uh, long black hair with red tinges, uh, dark eyes, and she's standing over a scorched wooden table, and there's a human cadaver on it. She had a hand out over it, and uh, at her feet was a swarm of skeletal rats, but as soon as you come around the corner with your light spell, she looks up and roll initiative. Test control. Let's see here. We will need, need that. And let's see. All right. No bad, no bad. Oops. I accidentally whispered my first roll, so. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> oh, that's a shame, too. Initiative. 
Uh, let's see. I need to leave that and reveal that. Peter, nice job. All right. Um. Okay. So next, we have to change the music from this creepy, creepy crawly stuff to something a little more interesting. That's better. And. Okay. Looks like we have up first Typhon. Oh, how I love being in the back to begin <laughs> initiative. Excellent, really. Um, <laughs> every time I will step around this corner, tell the owl to go forward and flutter in her face a bit, give the help action. Mm hmm. Back off into the room here. Uh, let's go actually back here. All right. So the uh, owl comes swooping over everyone's head, flies into the room, and I, su I assume that you told the owl to distract whoever was in there because I don't know how you would have been able to see her as a target for the owl, Typhon. Typhon, there's a woman in there. Distract her. <laughs> there we go. Right. Um, if you would like to rule that, that's fine. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I, I assumed it was, oh my gosh, yeah. scary lady. And then we rolled initiative. But um, if not, I'm fine with. No, that's all right. Uh, it, it's really, it just depends on, on if it's a targeted thing that you send or you just sort of send the owl in the, to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll say it's fine. We'll talk about it at some other point. Um, okay. That is your turn. That is my turn. All right. The owl flutters in and flutters in her face. She moves a hand languidly as she looks to turn at you, Falcon. Uh, by the way, I'm sorry. I will take the dodge action as I'm the just dodge standing action. here. Very yes. Uh, Rin. Uh, I'm going to uh, hold an action and ready my bow for when, uh, when I can see her. All right. Silas. Uh, Falcon, excuse me. Falcon. Fantastic. Uh, I'm going to try to avoid the typical traffic jam and move myself up to Sean. Is that the swarm of rats? That's it is right the there. swarm of rats. They are. Sw it's a swarm of skeletal rats, I should say. Lovely. I have a bone to pick with them, so I'm going to use my war hammer <laughs> then. <laughs> Come on, guys. D downplay. Downplay. You can't, don't, <laughs> don't give the satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I don't need much. <laughs> All right. Uh, just that hit um one moment while i move things around so that i can see uh no the eight does not hit the ah, swarm of skeletal rats curses all right then you're done uh, and then that is me yes silas <clears throat> all right well i'm going to first attempt to move through my friend doran here does that do anything to my it distance costs an extra point of move, no, extra point so that's of move. five ten fifteen mm-hmm 20, 25, 30. And I've got reach. So I'm going to attack the rats. All right. Uh, amazingly so, I'm sure that a six hits. A six is good in D20, right? <laughs> yeah, the lower the better. Um, I'm afraid that does not hit your... Um, you I'm telegraph distracted. your move. You telegraph your move too much, and the, the blade comes down, and the skeletal rats just sort of spread around it, and you knock a chip out of the floor. I, I have to say, I was distracted by the gothic beauty of this lovely lady. <laughs> Fine. Uh, <laughs> now it is her turn. She looks at you all, and reaches a hand into her robe, pulls something out, and says some arcane words <laughs> that dark ball of energy begins to form in her hand and it streaks out going past you Silas before it detonates here I'm sorry where is here uh, it is here oh my gosh um, that is a fireball except it is doing necrotic damage. 
So I need both you and Falkron to make a deck saving throw, please. Rude. I mean, she could have, you know, I don't know, bought drinks before that. <laughs> Good crikey. Oh, what is fireball radius again? Oof. Fireball it's a 20-foot 20 20, radius. 20 radius. Okay. Well, I think oh, we all yeah. have to make the save. Yeah, <laughs> everybody has to make the savings throw, right? Uh, I will uh, expand the uh, the image in order to... It goes around corners and gets you... Does it get you, Typhon? Uh, wh where no. is it centered again? It's hard it's to see centered, where it's placed. Yes, it's centered... Here, I'll move it to the side for a moment. It is centered right there. Yep. Uh, it right gets me. at the tunnel of the doorway. Gets everybody. Okay. Oh, Jesus. All right. Indeed. Do, do, do. And so <laughs> all of those. I'm going to kill a party tonight. <laughs> you were warned. Yeah. Well, Persephone, you are the only one left alive, so well done. Yeah. <laughs> Sing a song of us. <laughs> For some reason, uh, my Beyond 20 app is not rolling the spell. So, so it fails, obviously. Right, yes, yes of course it fails. Yes, yes. Uh, what is it you're attempting? A fireball? Oh, goodness. Wow. There it is. That oh, is a lot of twos. Yes. <laughs> wow. My God. One wow. Of the most so, I've ever seen. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, how did that happen? <laughs> wow. So <laughs> that's three, seven, okay. nine, ten. She was distracted by 12, my beauty. 14. <laughs> that's so 16 points of necrotic damage for everybody who failed. All righty. Um, and the DC was 14. Oh. So, Typhon, what did you roll? Uh, I had a 19 no, on my you roll. You succeeded, so you take a total of 8 points of necrotic damage. Rim. Oh. Uh, 22. You succeed. 8 points of necrotic damage. Faltron. Oh, I failed. Okay, so, so you take 16 uh, points yeah, of necrotic I'll, damage. I'll take those 6. Silas. 16. 16. So you take six, you take uh, eight points of necrotic damage, and last but not least, we have Doran. Uh, solid four. So I'll take solid four, full so damage. Sixteen oh, points of necrotic damage. That is quite a good turn for you all. Uh, <laughs> but now it is the skeletal rats' turn. The skeletal rats attack Falkron. They swarm into your space, Falkron. They are now occupying the same space as you are, and they are crawling up your legs, over your shoulders, and into your hair. Oof. And biting you. They hit AC 9. They do not hit. Then they do not hit. They manage to poke and prick at your armor, no. but do no damage. That is the end of that. Doran, your turn. Uh, well... I am going to step right here, one step forward, and uh, I'm just going to run that way, actually. And I think that's all the farther I can get. Okay. So I will um, hex her. Uh, or not hex, it's uh, the hex blade's curse, is what I mean. Uh, which isn't going to do anything right now, but there we go. Um, and I will just attack the rats that are on Falcon. All I right. Can. I just want to. I just want to double check. Nobody actually attacked Flannis, so nobody's taking advantage of the uh, owl's help action. Yeah, can't get there. Okay. Um, right. Unless, unless she uh, would have done anything when she cast the spell. Maybe that's why she rolled all those ones and twos. Uh, yeah, that's okay. We'll say that's why. <laughs> yeah. I hacked the mainframe with my owl. <laughs> I love it. Uh, God. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So roll that uh, attack there, Don. Yep. Uh, I'm not going to put any magic on it, so I will just... You do have the chance of hitting Falkron. Great. Don't worry, bud. Do it. All right. Uh, uh, roll the 20, so 
yours at the 20 definitely hits. Um, Falkren, could you be so kind as to roll a percentile dice? Uh oh. Well, all right then. Uh, you want to roll low. That's the one. Uh, that is low enough. Just oh, barely. <laughs> My goodness. Like, is that low enough? Just barely low enough. Um, so Torn is able to very deftly swing his uh, um, strange looking uh, sword and pick off a few of these skeletal rats. That is the end of Doran's turn. And we're back to the top of the order. Typhon. I've done what I can. Yes, indeed. Now, hmm. Oh. Uh, do I need uh, two squares of movement to go through both Rim and Mortlock? Or do I so, sneak yes. through? Okay. Is Mortlock you... joining in the fight? Um. Well, he. Oh. Uh, just a second. I didn't roll his saving throw. Mortlock is dead. Yeah. <laughs> Again. Mortlock failed his saving throw. All right, I think I'm going to have to add him to this uh, combat because he is not happy about the fact that he just got... I saw. He, he rolled a one for initiative. I saw that. <laughs> no, no. <yeah. laughs> uh, I will roll what he see what he rolls. Uh, tokens in the order. There it is. Initiative. Yeah, he's at 16. So. Yeah. So, uh, Typhon, your plan? Oh, I was going. Okay. Um, I was going to wait and see if he moved <laughs> out of my way on his turn. Uh, okay, uh, I will continue on. He was not planning to attack until he got blasted by the fireball. So got now it. he is. Okay, uh, can I look around the corner here and see? Yes, looking around a corner is permissible. Okay, in that case, I will um, look around the corner and cast a spell at her as venomous magic drips from my lips and I whisper in her direction. Tasha's hideous laughter, excellent. So what is your uh, DC for the save? Would be 13. And this is a whiz or charisma? It is whiz. She failed. Oh. She slowly begins to shuffle in place. And then it's hard to tell because it seems so incongruous on this strange thin woman's frame. But she is definitely doing a little jig. She has gritted her teeth and looks like She's in pain. And a Excellent. Smile spreads across my face, and it looks for a moment like there are, um, like my incisor teeth have grown and sharpened, dripping Ooh. a bit with a brackish green liquid. And I laugh. Yeah. <laughs> Broker of suffering, you see. All right, Typhon, is that you done? Would you scoot across the hallway for me to give uh, give me room to take a shot, Typhon? I'll, no, I cannot actually. You can't. Are you out? <laughs> I'm out of movement. <laughs> All right. Um, how far? Can and I don't I want go? to stop watching her ride on the ground. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Um, would I interrupt your spell if I went in front of you? No. No. All right. Let's see. How far can I get here? Um, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. I don't. Do I have line of sight there? Corner to corner. If one corner of your you can straight line, yeah, you do have. All outside. right. And she's not behind a door frame, so there is no cover. Uh, the fifteen hits. Excellent. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, and as my bonus action, I am going to um, I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark on her. All right. So Hunter's Mark is active. And she is prone. Oh, mm, she was prone. So I'm afraid that you have to make that attack with disadvantage, Rim. Oh, goodness. Okay, let's try that so again. So sorry about that. That's sorry. Right, I still love you. Okay. Um, hold, please. All the buttons. Up. Oh, that hits even better. 
But we'll, keep, <laughs> we'll keep the damage from the first one. Well, yeah, because uh, that's a lower number, right? If that's the 15. Well, I mean, that was when you rolled... F- well... Yeah. yeah yes, it, it, was, it was disadvantaged, yeah. so the lower roll rules. Yeah. Right. Yep. So right. Uh, we will call this red dot her hunter's mark, okay? Excellent. Thank you. No problem. Uh, let's see. That is the end of Rim's turn. Mortlock comes barreling through. One, two, Shimmy up against the wall. Try and let him pass. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So I he want to be in the way of that. He just keeps on running through. And that's all he can do. That is all his movement. He runs right up to Flennis, uh, that it, which is what he told you the name of this woman was. And that is the end of his turn. Falkron. All right, I am like, so I'm like gonna try to, I'm, I'm moving away with all these rats that are kind of on me uh, and then trying to, I'm gonna try to toll the. Well, if you step out of that space, they will be able to take an attack of opportunity on you. Uh-huh. I was wondering about that. I was like, what, what does a swarm do when they swarm? All right then, so uh, I, I'm just gonna try to, I'm gonna toll the dead on the rats. So. Uh, all right. All right, so. Dip, 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 dip. Toll. And there's that dolorous bell. Pong. You need to get some sound effects up in here. Yeah. Do. Ding, mm-hmm. ding, dong. A do. Ding, 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 dong. It show up yet? So, uh, it has not. Um, Oh, haha. are any of the uh, are the rats? Um, have they been taking any damage yet? I don't believe so. They have. Uh, D- uh, Dorn was able to do a little bit of uh, one point of damage. Uh, so their wisdom save. Eh? I was just trying to figure out how this would work. Well, it's is it like the the size of the swarm reduces? That type of thing, Sean? Mm, no, there's uh, the other thing. Uh, I, I guess it's just normal. They're undead. I always thought that necrotic damage didn't affect undead, but apparently it does because I can't find any reason why it wouldn't. Low so, level ones, it seems to. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, one point of damage. They uh, did not make their wisdom saving throw. Not very wise, this swarm <laughs> of rats. That's okay. Um, it didn't hit very hard. One point of damage. Yeah. Very good. Uh, next, we have Silas. Uh, I definitely don't want my ally here to suffer, but I also really want to get at that evil person, so... I'm going to shut, like, don't worry about me! (laughs) (laughs) Going to move here. Mm -hmm. And then attack. Now, she is prone. Does that give me anything? It gives you advantage on melee attacks. I'm certainly going to use a melee attack. A 12 to hit. 12 does not hit. However... Wait a minute. Let me just double check. Her AC is 12. You do hit. I'm going to make my own damage roll. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) How did that happen? 11 points. I All right. The same thing. I was like, "It's highlighted. What happens if I click it?" Like, <laughs> <laughs> she's right. Ri- she's writhing on the ground, looking up at you with rage, and you <laughs> come down with the glaive right on her form, uh, carving that a nice chunk out of her arm. Five ten, uh, five ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. This table that we're seeing with a corpse on it—that's mm-hmm. uh, correct. That's accurate. Yes. Okay. Then I will uh, end my turn there. Thank you. Very good. Next up, we have her. Now, she has a chance to break out of this spell, correct, Typhon? That is correct. Next, another wisdom saving throw? Yes. This one, she succeeds. She throws off the spell and stands. And that um, is all she's able to do, I believe. It is the end of her turn, correct? Oh, the yes, it's the end of her turn. So I guess she is still prone. Thank you. So that is all she's able to do. That is then uh, the skeletal rats go right after her. They continue to attack Falkron. (laughs) 
<laughs> Again, they are all over you, Falkhorn. It is, it is very disconcerting. You know, oh. rats to begin with are are not pleasant, but these they're even more prickly and the little teeth and their little uh, claws are all over and they're getting in your hair and they're trying to get down your armor and they're trying to get up to your skin, but they can't. They can't find their way through your armor. They're just swarming all over you like some horrible carpet. Gotta have faith. <laughs> Don't you call it a horrible carpet. <laughs> <laughs> how, how dare you, sir? <laughs> you are gross. <laughs> Dorn, it's um, your turn. Am I able to walk over this guy on the table is it difficult terrain or is it like it, it, we'll call it we'll call it um i mean it's a low table uh it depends i guess on what you want to do if you want to i just want to pass by it i just want to like hop over or yeah whatever. um i'm Duke, not gonna dukes make... of hazard right over yeah. the course <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna make you roll for that yeah uh you, you're able to uh to do that um that it will cost you extra water or right. to it again <laughs> <laughs> uh then I would like to just get around here if I can. Uh, easily around done. Around to the backside, 5, 10, mm -hmm. 20, 25. I think that's 30. Yeah, you're good. Okay. She um, is still prone. And the rat's over there, so I'll just attack her. No no reason to uh, mm. do anything else, really. Things looking bad for Flennis. Uh, Flennis? That definitely hits. Uh, go ahead and roll again to see if you oh, uh, crit. Right. Advantage. So you did uh, not crit, so we'll take no, that. Uh, 12 are damage. You... 12 damage. All right. Yeah, I'm always with a shield, so. You are able to cut out another large chunk of this woman. Um, um, and, Sean. Oh, sorry. oh, I'm sorry. Please go ahead. Uh, I do two more damage, I think, because I hexed, or I did my curse on her. Oh, okay. Yes. And that'll be it. All right. Uh, Persephone has not had a turn yet. She's kind of hanging out, keeping watch. She is kind of hanging out, keeping watch. I am keeping her. I, I, I knew what was coming, and I didn't want to Aww. take her out. Didn't want to take her out while she wasn't present. thought that was What wrong. a bench. Oh, uh, right. I, I do have to say um, one thing I did forget to mention. Um, even if your owl made his save... Uh, oh, yeah. I, I can't delete him, so he's he's uh, dead. He's, yeah, he's, for sure. He's quite dead. Oh, owl named Hawk. <laughs> or Hawk. Rip Hawk DL. All right, so let's see. That was uh, Doran's turn, and then a question. Uh, so we're back up to Typhon. Okay. 5, 10, 15. I will get to here. Seeing her um, squirm around on the ground, and I will... Um, extend my hand and say breathe deep let it all stop and cast this at her poison wow that spray. is a very powerful poison poison spray she fails her constitution save good roll my goodness she begins to cough <laughs> she face turns even paler than it was and she does not look like she's doing very well. She's had better days. Uh, Rim. I do right. my best to try and point out vital organs on the arriving target. <laughs> Just for flavor. <laughs> I will step in and uh, hopefully finish her off. Uh, not with that roll, you won't. No, no, I won't. Especially a disadvantage because she's prone. Uh, Mordlock attacks. With a natural one. Uh, he's still smoldering from the fire, and he also looks like he's rather creeped out by the rats. And he brings down his massive uh, great club, but manages to miss Flannis. As she's no longer in, under the effects of the spell, she's able to dodge more effectively. Falkron. All right, I am about sick of these rats, so I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, so, uh, when I, so, Sean, when I leveled up to three, I got a new... Uh, another channel divinity you did indeed yes okay okay cool so and and, and i can do that yes you but, can yes so if it go... recharge it recharges on a um short on rest. a uh, short rest right yes it does indeed so i'm going to turn undead on these rats and so very nice say so they have to make another wisdom save oh well actually let me go ahead and do the thing oh 
come on. Uh, you don't actually have to roll anything for right, this, right? You right. just said yeah, okay. that you're doing it? I'm doing it. Uh, what? Tell me, <laughs> this is, uh, tell me again. I, I want to know how Falkrin turns undead. Oh, what she, okay. So she goes ahead and like, so she brings her warhammer together in front of her like this. And she says, let suffering be my might. And then like, and then like it just like light emanates off of her. Very nice. It yeah, emanates off you. And the the uh, uh, skeletal rats seem to uh, extend from you in sort of a nimbus of skeletal rats as the light glows. But as the light fades, they all fall back upon you. They made oh, their saving up. throw. Fall <laughs> I'm so sorry. How wise uh, are these rats? Yeah. They're not wise at all, but they rolled well. Uh, they're making up for the one that um, Mortlock rolled. Falcon. We have more in oh, common sorry. than you admit, Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> Silas, Falcon, it's your turn. Falcon stirring necromancy and suffering all over the place. Is uh, what type of priest is she? Silas, it's your turn. Right then, uh, I'm just going to uh, continue the slice and dice. Still uh, with advantage. Striking out. <laughs> Definitely with advantage this time. Striking out with my fancy glaive. Unfortunately, a nine to hit. And I'm afraid that does not hit. She is very uh, good at dodging now that she's not under the effects of the spell. And now it is her, her turn. She stands and she brings her hands together and spreads out her fingers and a wave of black energy comes cascading out. She casts flaming, uh, excuse me, burning hands. Let's see if this spell works. So strange. The other one didn't not work. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, well, there it is. So everybody needs to make a uh, save. Is everybody? Move. Everybody's in the line I'm of fire. Sorry. Uh, in a 15 foot cone from where she is. So she ignored Doran, and she made her 15 foot cone uh, going out towards Typhon. So I believe that is uh, Mortlock, Silas, Falkron, and Typhon, and the rats. Well, all need to make something. saving throws, uh, deck saving throws. Great. <laughs> Falkron, you failed. You take thirteen points of necrotic damage. Typhon, oh. you saved. Silas, you saved. So both Typhon and Silas take, let's see, half of 13 rounded down. So six points of necrotic damage. The rats failed. So they take the full 13. All right. That brings us to... Typhon falls to the ground. Oh. As, as does Falkroon. Oh, dear. Jeez. All right, that is Flennis' turn. She is no longer prone. Uh, now we have Doran. Well, uh, my, a couple of my buddies just went down, so hopefully I can finish her off quickly here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to cast... Yeah, okay. Um, oh, uh, nothing, before you really. continue, Doran, I should say yeah. that as Falkron falls, you realize that the spell left all of the rats uh, black smoldering ruins. So the okay, so uh, they're, swarm they're, of rats they're, they're did not succeed, did not did not live. All right. Uh, I will just attack her. Uh, I may as well do Booming Blade, mm -hmm. as long as it's sitting around, in case she moves. <laughs> Uh, uh long sword, roll it. Okay, that's an eighteen. That is hits. a hit. Ten damage. Uh the final blow is yours. Yes. <laughs> um seeing that they all went down uh he kind of uh realizes he needs to get this shit over with uh and just makes several sort of wild swings in a row um to try and take her out uh, from behind as she's casting the spell or right after she casts it. As each one hits her, she's got her hands out with the spell and she's concentrating and she's 
blasting the area with fire as each of your blows hits her. And she manages to use her last ounce of strength to a little, a little bit more dark power into the spell and she collapses and you swear there's a smile on her face. That is the end of combat. All right, I am going to uh, rush in and see if we can uh, we can stabilize right, our fallen We're going comrades. to keep, we're going, I'm sorry, I should have oh. kept up the um, initiative order, yes. We will keep the initiative order up uh, while the people who are rolling death saves roll death saves. So we have Doran just finished. So next up is Typhon. Typhon, roll a death save, please. Aha. Uh -huh. That is one step closer to the grave, Typhon. Rim, uh -huh. it is your turn. What do you do? Uh, I, I will rush to Typhon and see if I, can, uh, if I can help him. All right. I will remind you that you found some healing potions uh, after you defeated the death's head of Baal. Uh, if you oh. wish, you can use one of them. If you do not then you can try a medicine check. Uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's, I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we save them or should we? Uh... That's uh, that's your call. I will, I, I'll unstop her one and uh, yeah. let's get, let's get Typhon, let's get Typhon healed oh, up here. Oh, you meant should we save the potions? <laughs> save the potions. <laughs> yes, the potions. Should I? Yeah, no, let's let them die. There's far too many people in this campaign. I mean, it's, it is it is crowded in this hallway. It is no. Goodness. Let us. Uh, I will oh, unstop our healing potion. All right. Um, did somebody keep track of how many you had? I believe there were four. Fifty thousand. I believe. <laughs> um, I believe there were four. All right. There were four. I think that sounds right. Excellent. Uh, so that is one down. Typhon. Uh, let's see. I believe it is two d four. Would you like to roll it, or should I? You roll it. Okay. Hey. Nice. Hey. That is a powerful healing potion. You come back from the brink of death, Typhon, and are lying on the floor. Uh, <laughs> so, ooh, nice bit of parsley tongue there. Mortlock Van Dampur is. Uh, 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 she was. Uh, like I said, a tough customer, but. <laughs> oh. Oh, she looks really hurt. Falkrad, make a death saving throw. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click. All right, so uh, off the, uh, help me out guys, D&D &D Beyond, uh, so, so just click. Yeah, click on hit points under your like, whatever, oh, yeah, no. or whatever. And yeah, then my... there's, between the death saves, there is a little tiny icon that will roll a death save. So between the successes and failures, this is a tiny little roll 20 icon. Ah, thank you. And there ah, is. you managed to uh, stave off the effects of death uh, for a moment. Falkrun, that's you done. Silas, your turn. You gotta have faith. Uh, quick question on logistics. Um, I had exhausted uh, Lay on Hands, but then I leveled up. Do I? She is those? still cursed, remember. We cannot take magical healing. We are both cursed. I was oh. hoping that nobody would remember that, but that's true. Uh, as so I, I go to lay on hands, I, I am reminded by Rim. Yes. Uh, thank you, Rim. It's a trap. It's time for a potion. Right. Um, potion. Potions are magical healing, and two are they? Are not? they? They are. I think we need uh, to stabilize. That was, that was some debate. What? Okay, then. Hand me my med kit. I can do it. Oh, now I'm going to be beholden to that guy. In that case, <laughs> uh, Silas, you can attempt a medicine check. Can I assist him? Are you proficient in medicine? I am. You may assist, uh, Silas. Uh, and I will do that with right. advantage. With advantage. 14. 14 is a success. Falkrin is stabilized. Now we can end combat. It's clumsy bandaging, but. It will stop the bleeding. However, she is still unconscious. Falkrin is unconscious. Yes. Flennis is definitively dead. Yes. Yeah, Deflis, I'm sorry. I will. I, I will. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to check in just a moment. Don't worry. <laughs> if you know, I, if somebody else could do the honors, I'd let them, but nobody else can. So there. Flennis is dead, um, and everybody seems to be all right for the moment. All right. Uh, let us let us check her body. Uh, Rim is gonna Rim is gonna move over to her body and see uh, what's on her. All right. Um, roll an investigation check, please. 
and I'm going to call Persephone into the room. What was that? I barely hear that. What was that? He's uh, calling Persephone into the room. Oh, well, she was on her way. <laughs> I cannot believe that Fireball did only did 16 points. That's incredible. Anyway, um, right. So, Flannis has a flail that she didn't get a chance to use. It's lying on the ground next to her. Um, she, of course, has her robe. Uh, in a large pocket in her robe is a dusty spell book. It has a black leather cover and a tiny skull-shaped locking mechanism. Um, your investigation check uh, discovered a key hidden in her hair rim. Oh. Does anybody want this? I highly recommend not opening it at the moment. Well, you found the key, didn't you? Yes. Well, I think it's worth a look at some point. Though I'm loath to wait. I'm curious what knowledge lies beyond that. It will keep that necrotic energy that she spread across all of us. That is like nothing I have even heard of before. That is not an ability that is that any teacher any know. Rim hands the spell book to Typhon. I'll hold on to the key so you're not tempted by fate. Are you not going to really? Do you think it wise to open that book at this moment? As you wish. And I tuck the spell book into my um, pack. All right. So Rim has the key and Typhon has the spell book. Interesting. All right. Uh, Morlock says, well, that's it then. <laughs> that's all three of them dead. I mean, do you wish vengeance him. upon? Do you wish vengeance upon your brother? Are you going to help us? Uh, no. I think I'm going to just be on my way. Hmm. I mean, you go, you're welcome. I'm um, sorry, uh, Silas. Your your microphone has dropped drastically in volume. Really? Yes. Is that for everyone? Yes, I can yes. hardly hear you, my friend. That's no good. I said no good. I fix that. <laughs> if you speak dramatically, it's more effective. Mm -hmm. Well, then. <laughs> oh, I, that's a great voice for Silas. I like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what does the rest of the room look like, Sean? Um, much as you see, it looks like at one point this room went uh, further in the direction that you are right there, but it has collapsed in on itself. Mm. Um, if you're looking for something else, uh, roll an investigation check. No, all right, let's see here. You do a fairly thorough search of this room while everybody is trying to decide what to do with Falkron's unconscious form. Um, and you are satisfied that other than the corpse on the table and the things that you have found on Flennis, uh, there is nothing of interest. Okay. Hmm. I think what we've done, we've done what we've Back. come to do. I suggest we make haste and get out yeah, of here. Yeah, there are probably bound to be more cultists out here, but with the three leaders dead, this place will dry up in days. So is that uh, everyone planning on leaving? How are you going to deal with Falkron? Um, I will carry her. Very good. I'm not even going to make you roll for that. You are so strong. She is very meaty and that plus her armor she's a hefty burden but uh you have no trouble carrying her in fact it's a very impressive feat of strength for those of you who are interested in such things let's see here i am once again going to port you all are we going to leave the treasure down there or are we going to uh come back oh, what that's do you a guys good thing that do somebody mentioned those, that what do you ah. guys want to do with those four chests <laughs> I was wondering if you would remember that. We took some of the, uh, I mean, some of the more important artifacts, we, but we, there's a ton of cash that's just kind of hiding out down there. 
Uh, we've got a few strong people. We could try loading it up into one or two chests and try carrying it. I'm certain that while uh, the church that Falkrin would go to would perhaps heal her, they may request some type of compensation. Hmm. And we also have curses to remove. Uh, could well, I... It seems that you all have this sorted out. Um, I'm going to take my leave. And, uh, good luck against my mother and my brothers. Yeah. Enjoy Waterdeep. Um, what? Um, goodbye. <laughs> and Mortlock leaves. Could I, um... So, d could I make a medicine check to see on Fulcrum and just sort of check on the recovery, see what how long I think it would be before she is able to walk again and carry herself and whatnot? Um, yes, make so a medicine something check. Something like that. Make okay. a medicine check. Um, if you roll high enough, I will say that you are able to bring her to one hit point. Then again, I can I can offer uh, assistance. Excellent. Lovely. So with advantage. Okay. Um, I'm afraid what that's not here? high enough um, because this is not something that uh, can be done with a medicine kit normally uh, without the feet. Um, you are able to determine, however, that she is not in any danger of dying, and with a short rest, she would probably recover enough of herself to be able to walk. Okay. She needs to rest just a moment. Let her body recover naturally. Once we can lay her in one spot for about an hour, I think she will come. Perhaps, perhaps I could stay here with her while you go to retrieve the chests. We could rest just a moment. Hmm. All right. They did say there were more cult. There were more cultists down here. Wouldn't didn't it they? be wiser to have her rest at the baths? I'm not sure what we'll find when we walk out into the baths. It may not be a good place for uh, dead bodies or half-dead bodies for, with, with naked people in water and whatnot. Well, as you I'm recall, the bath was closed when you came down here. Be that clear. was some time ago. We, well, we brought um, what's her name? Vendetta up there, right? Did we yes, see you did. anything up there? You did not. Okay. It's fine. Everything's fine up there. Still closed. Yeah, still closed. Um, everything seemed fine. I'm less concerned about bathers and more concerned about the cultists that may have wandered into our path between here and there. There are other doors we haven't searched yet, and who knows if there's more of them down there. Mm. Does your charter as part of the Flaming Fist compel you to search every single room? I don't think so. If it does, by all means, we can go room by room and slay everything we find. I'd normally be happy to, but with her injured and us having completed the important parts of our mission. Are you sure that Sarge will be convinced that our assignment is complete based on just killing the leaders? Fair enough. If you all want to, I'm happy to. I'm not trying to convince us one way or another. I just don't want to come back once we leave. I don't think it's wise to press on further until we've healed all of us. That is true. Well, I, I suppose without their leaders, they will, even if they do regather, it will not be in strength. Or not as, at least not as much strength as it could be, so... We withdraw? Let's. So the plan is to take Falkron to the baths and have somebody watch her there while the rest of you recover the treasure? Or was are you leaving the treasure? Uh, no, we're gonna, we're gonna, we should, I, we should collect it. I think that was the plan. That yeah. was the plan. All right. Hmm. You all come up to the baths. Once again, I'm going to teleport you. You return to the secret door and you are happy to be rid of the 
festering and stinking sewers. Um, the uh, the basins of water would probably not be a good place for an unconscious dwarf. However, uh, in the uh, two rooms here are massage tables, which, although stiff, are quite comfortable. And you lay uh, Falcon on one of them and leave a guard and go and find a return for all yeah. the treasure that you want. I'm going to take Falkron into the southern room uh, that at least only has one point of entry and exit. Mm -hmm. Very good. So be it. Um, do you all recall all of the treasure? Did you have it written down somewhere? Or do you need me to uh, say it again? I don't have it written down. Does anybody? No, I'm... I'm... It's I'll pull quite up a, a doc we, and write it down. Yeah, we, okay. we took we took the the most important pieces with us. Uh, mm -hmm. All the it's coins. Quite a bit and of whatnot. coin. There was indeed. I think is that all that we left was the coins. Well, yeah, I, we, I will I will read again what you found. Um, there were four chests. Chest number one held. 4,500 copper pieces and two red crystal vials with gold stoppers. Um, we were unable to determine what these vials were, but the gold stoppers alone are worth something. This chest weighs 70 pounds. Chest two contains 10 eye agates, 10 gold pieces each, scattered amid 1,250 silver pieces. With the coins and the, coins and the gemstones, the chest weighs 37 pounds. Chest three contains a delicate porcelain dragon mask worth 25 gold pieces, resting on a bed of 2,400 copper pieces and 500 silver pieces. This chest weighs 55 pounds. The mask weighs one pound. Chest four just contained the bronze crown with the five spires worth about 250 gold pieces. Each spire is shaped and painted to resemble one of the five kinds of chromatic dragons. Crown weighs two and a half pounds. Are you taking it all, or are you taking oh, yeah. just parts? No, we, taking can, all we can carry it all. Yeah. Very good. So, uh, I will say that the process of carefully moving back through the dungeon... Um, ooh, here's an interesting question. Um, Falkrun was your light source. How do so, you traverse the, 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 the I dungeon? I am now a gloom stalker, so uh, I have 60 feet. Oh, excellent. Ah, we'll have to find a way to explain why that happened while you were down here. But uh, all right, it was so all, all that all that necrotic damage he took unlocked it. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's a good idea. I like mm, that. Put that one in the vault. Um, Rim, you uh, so you're fine. Uh, Persephone goes with you. She can't see. Typhon, do you stay or do you go? I will go as well. All right, so you go. You, Rim, and Persephone. Um, I guess Persephone will just be... So, okay, Persephone starts to go and then realizes she's not going to be able to see. And she looks at either of you about, does anybody have a torch? I and, do. I do. But then you recall that between here and where you're going is the is, gas is a chamber. Of gas. So... Um, I can see in the dark, so... So she will also stay. So since it's only Typhon and Rim... Moving carefully, the rim is, car is, is strong enough to carry two of the chests at once, but it takes a couple of trips. While you do this, you don't discover any more uh, cultists. Oh, Everything good. is silent, and an hour goes by. Um, so, Silas, you may take a, a short rest since you were not doing anything, and Falkrin, you recover one hit point. Are you with us, Falkron? Did we win? <laughs> <laughs> we did. Excellent. Just gotta have faith. <laughs> Do you still feel the curse upon you? Unfortunately, the yes. Yes, the answer as, would be yes. As, as I imagine, since I'm sitting here and have barely recovered. You are no very what? fortunate to be alive. I say, the crying shall, God watches over us all. Shall we, <sighs> shall we return to your temple? Yes. Perhaps we should take advantage of this clean water before we leave. Hmm? 
Yes, we've been in the sewers for quite some time. <laughs> All right. I'm not you suggesting a bath, a... mind you, but just a splash. <laughs> Right. You all uh, wash it up and make your way to the door. You open it and see lying before you the body of Mortlock Van Tampur. Oh. He didn't make it very far. I step out and immediately survey the area. Uh, it doesn't take long for you to realize that you are not alone. Stepping out from the shadows, it's a late afternoon, so there's really not that much shadow for them to be hiding in, but they step out you see four strange looking individuals. They're wearing black leather armor and they wear strange masks and cloaks that give each of them a vaguely dragon-like appearance. And all five brandish curved steel blades reminiscent of dragon claws. And one of them points a blade at you, Silas, and says, return our treasure. Now, would I recognize these? They look slightly familiar, perhaps, to some corpses we discovered. Uh, those are generic cultist tokens. Um, think of them as being just uh, um, generic uh, markers on a map. Uh, Very these good. are They're all cultists, but these cultists are of a completely different look than the ones that you saw in the Very map. good. So I don't recognize them from anywhere. Correct. All right. Um, <clears throat> they've obviously killed my friend here. <clears throat> Used very loosely. Uh, I'm just going to take out my glaive and look at him and say, take it. Hmm. Another two cultists appear. I, I just I, step out next to Silas. Yes, yes, yes. So has anyone else stepped outside with Silas, or is Silas? Uh, just... You can all step out with Silas if you wish. Okay. G could get crowded there. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna hang in the back. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. Just for a second. So the, the doors are open, right? It's double doors there? Yes, the doors are open. The uh, cultist holds his blade again and looks at you and says, We can sense when the treasure is near. It is sacred property, and it does not belong to you. Return it, or your fate will be the same as he who stole it. And he kicks the body of Mortlock. Is all of this your sacred treasure? The coins, the masks, all of it all, just these relic types here. He looks towards you, Silas, and says, You would give it to us. I recommend we do. Well, we can yours sense when yours. it is We can sense what it is near. But we would need to examine to make sure that all of it has been reclaimed. What do you wish to have? He looks at you, Silas. Looks at you, Doran. Stand aside. I just look over at Silas and I shrug like, I'm, I'm fine either way. Frankly. Hmm. These aren't the cultists we're here for, but not a big fan of most cultists. I'm growing impatient. Don't be hasty. Well then, um, hmm. Let them have a look. I... I don't think Turn this is sideways a fight we to want let them the pass moment. through the door. I'm standing in the doorway. Do you let them pass? Turn all right. Sideways to let them pass. All right. They all file I'm, I'm, past please, you. Please do note: at no point do I put down the glaive, 
or go into any sort of comfortable position. I want to see how they distribute. Where are the chests? Can somebody ping the tape, the uh, map? Uh, we can say we left them here. Yeah, probably just, yep. I'm gonna... Oh, the undead rats are there. Ha! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Souvenirs. This fellow turns to his companions and they all pull out their weapons and they're holding them very close to you, Silas. And he walks past you. Walks past you, Rim. Walks past you, Typhon. Walks past Persephone. He begins to open the chest and starts rummaging through it. Yes. Now, as he is rummaging, just a note. Some of those artifacts had been removed earlier. I know. The chests were not uh, complete, so to speak. Right. He picks up the bottles, leaving the coins and the gems. But then he takes the mask and he looks, sort of slowly scans the room and then his eyes come back to Rim. You... Dragon oh. whelp, you have it. I pull it out of my pocket and I offer it to him. He snatches it. This holy relic should not be profaned by your hands such as yours. There was one other thing. A dagger. What have you done with it? Do any what of us have, have a dagger? With it? Yeah, who took it? There was no dagger with the treasure. We tell them, though. Yeah. We, we saw no dagger downstairs. <laughs> Imagine all of us look at Typhon like... <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you all, his eyes sort of wide with religious fervor. Very well. Yes. Yes, I can sense it is not here. Fine. You say this man was your friend? I wouldn't actually say that, no. He, he fought our enemies with us. I see. He and his family are thieves. Followers of the devil Zariel, they stole from our mistress. If you Who can that be? Oh, he turns to you and says, holds up the, cr the, uh, the crown. Why, the supreme being, of course. Tiamat, the five-headed dragon. Hmm. She would be most pleased with you all if you continue your crusade against the enemies that have presented themselves to her. These followers of Zario. And he kicks the body of Mordlock again as he passes through. He says, If you find that dagger, we will find you. It's possible there may be some sort of alliance that can be made between us. But I only... spit on the ground. <laughs> and then again, perhaps not. He whistles. And they depart. Tiamat's errand boys, it seems. Ah, uh, uh, Pretty sure I could only take it like two of them. <laughs> all so. right well done all um shall we take a break there it's a little early but i think that this is the uh, proper time agreed ah. okay all right well done all you have completed the dungeon of the dead three Ooh.